Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct lecture number 18 of our course. And today's topic is call instruction in subroutine. This is very important topic from a semi language point of view or from programming language point of view. So uh, we'll try to uh, cover all the basic concepts in this lecture about call instructions and subroutine. And we'll also consider a, a specimen example of semi language programming. Okay, call instruction and subroutine. These are two interrelated topics. So let's consider what is call instruction. Uh, from big 18 f 452 point of view, it is a four byte instruction, which is used to call a subroutine. Uh, I hope you have understand, you have gone through with the concept of subroutine or something related, which is called user defined function in higher language programming, right? So subroutine and user defined functions are very important and integral part. We will come to what is uh, to the point that what is subroutine or what is user defined function. But why we are using call instruction? We are using call instruction to uh, to call these subroutines or user defined functions in the main code or the main assembly language code, right? So, what is a subroutine? Subroutine is a piece of code which is written separately. Separately, what is separately, or why we say separately? It is not part of uh, main code, or you can say the main uh, starting code, but it is used in that, co in that code. And how it is used? Normally it is written at the end of the program. When we, we know that assembly language is started with the assembly directive originate, and we start the programming address or the ROM address 2A or 00, zero hertz, right? But after that, we actually, write something and which is called main code and uh, usually there is an infinite loop in the semi language code and that is uh, bounded by conditional branch or unconditional branch so that we repeat the certain piece of code uh, for indefinite time period we have seen so many examples in previous lectures right so at the end of that uh, unconditional branch loop or indefinite loop right there is a something some separate code is written, but it is written before the end assembler directive. You know that this is very important thing. We cannot write anything or any instruction after end assembler directive because compiler will not compile anything written after that end assembler directive. So a subroutine is written separately or in the end of the code, but it is written before the end assembler directive. So uh, you should not consider that it will be written after the end assembler directive, but uh, this is the main point that it will it will also be part of the code which will be compiled by the compiler. So it will be written before assembly directive, but it is not the part of original or the main code, right? Specific task is accomplished during the subroutine. This is very important thing. We all, we call this subroutine using this call instruction, but uh, for what purpose we call it? Because that subroutine or user defined function is uh, written for to perform certain specific task. So that specific task is accomplished whenever we call that subroutine. So how we can call that subroutine using this call instruction? We will simply call, we will sim we simply write call and the name of the subroutine we want to call. So that specifically will serve or uh, call, the, uh, uh, call the subroutine into the main program or we will leave the main program and jump to the subroutine part. We will perform the subroutine part. And once that subroutine task whatever written uh, is finished then we have to come back to the main code and there we use another important instruction return instruction so return instruction is kind of related with the call whenever you're going to use call instructions in the same code you will also be using return instruction or return statement so why we use return statement we know that call function called that subroutine in which we were interested right and then uh, we leave the main program and went into the subroutine, run it by instruction by instruction. And once that subroutine is finished, then uh, there will be something or some callback function so that we can return to the main code. And that is our return statement. So it is return statement is normally written in the end of the subroutine. So it is, you can say the last instruction which will be written in the subroutine and we can come uh, why it is written to come back to the main program wherever we left from the main program uh, it basically 
returns us back to the main program so this is the uh, this is the importance of return statement so whenever we use a subroutine or we write a code which is considered as a subroutine we will use last instruction as return statement so that we can come back to the main program so i hope you have understand let's see an example so what is our some uh, example program in this call and subroutine example so we want to perform this task and we have done it before so let's see what is it send 55 to port b so that means 55 hertz will be sent to port b and so port b will be considered as our output port and keep complementing it so whatever the data we are sending which is 55 hertz to port b we want to complement it after one second delay so these are this is the task so let me write the code so that uh, we can actually analyze the code so this is the code we have written uh, for this purpose let's see how this code is working so this is our first line which is originate to a that means it is just in a similar directive and we are starting our code in program memory at this address to a hex right or hexadecimal to a then what we do we send move little to working zero zero it will store zero zero hex in working register and then we send this value to press p so we are using move wf press p so what will happen using these two lines we are actually uh, making uh, the port b as output port i hope at this stage this point is clear to everyone so this uh, piece of code is very frequent in now nowadays in our code so this piece of code is just determining uh the port b as or defining port b as output port then what we did we we use this value 55 hertz we you we move this value in working register so move little to working 55 hertz so 55 hertz will be stored in working register then what we did we send it to port b that's what we wanted to do so move working file whatever the value which is stored in the working register and which is 55 hertz in this scenario or at this stage of the code uh, will be sent to the port b right and now we are doing this next task so keep complementing it this one second delay for a moment we are not doing it but we are complementing it right so what we are doing we are using an instruction which we have seen number of time nowadays uh, so com f port b that means uh, we have uh, complemented the port b whatever the data that is means 55 five hacks was sent to the port b and now we are complementing it right so what we want to do Next, we want to repeat this stuff for indefinite time. So branch to ABC, it is, it is an unconditional branch. It will force the code to uh, come back, to go back to the ABC and ABC level is defined here. So ABC is jumping to this point, which is com F. So code B will again complement. So in this way, this code will be running. And this is a loop in which we are forcing it to uh, run for indefinite time interval, right? So this is the loop. But what is the thing which is missing here? And one thing more which is noticeable and assembler directive is used here. That means nothing is written after this assembler directive. So what we can do, we can actually, uh, uh, the, the compiler, what compiler will do, compiler will actually only execute from this line to this line. And uh, after the end assembler directive, nothing will be executed. So uh, in this program, what is missing? One second delay is missing. So if you remember in the previous lecture where we used nested loop technique to produce one second delay, which was not effective. Of course, there was some uh, reasonable uh, error. So uh, we learned that we can improve that efficiency using the timers, but we will cover those topics in, uh, in some other lectures. But right now we, are, we can use that technique though it is a faulty one, but we can use a uh, handsome delay uh, or significant amount of delay uh, using that technique. So what we are going to do, we are going to paste the same code after this line. So after com f, there will be certain delay, right? Uh, due to that specific example, I hope you remember we used four crystal oscillator, four megahertz crystal oscillator, and then, then we can, for 40 megahertz crystal oscillator, and then we used it for delaying calculation. And you can repeat that stuff. Other thing, what what other we can what other thing we can do? We can actually uh, use a call statement over here, right? That means we will be using a call statement, right? Call 
which is our today's topic call statement and then we will mention the name of uh, subroutine for example there is a subroutine which is called delay d e l a y again there is a concept that you need to consider that this name can be chosen without any uh, restrictions unless you are not using any keyword which is already defined in the sami language instruction set of tk18f microcontroller so a call will be the instruction which will be calling a subroutine whose name is delay and delay should be a subroutine which which must be written before this and assembler directive and we will paste whatever the code we have written in that last lecture uh, for one second delay uh, in this subroutine right so let's see how we can do it okay now i have written that same code in which we have seen in the last lecture so this is the same code i hope you remember we used three nested loops with initial counter of t100 which were saved in c1 c2 c3 and these c1 c2 3 are are defined in the start of the code as assembler using assembler directive equate right so c1 is equal to 0 0 hex c2 is equal to 0 1 hex and c3 is equal to 0 2 hex so i am i won't be explaining this loop because we have uh, already seen the explanation of this loop in the last lecture so uh but what we are doing here we are writing this code and bef after uh, be before this code we have written a name delay d e l a y delay delay is the name of this subroutine because this code is now being used as user defined function or simple subroutine which is being called in this main code called delay so whenever uh, there will uh, whenever code b is complemented what will happen it will delay it will call the delay right or call the subroutine whose name is delay so this uh, program counter will jump from this part to this label which is delay and then this code will run right so we you know that it will be running after about 100 about 1 million time so when this code when that when this nested loop finished right all these three nested loop finished what is going to happen we will come out of the loop in this third loop right and then we are executing this instruction return so if you remember as i explained return instruction is used at the end of subroutine so this is the end of the subroutine and program counter will be returning to the main code from where it is actually called so this instruction was uh, used call instruction was used to call this delay and this return instruction is coming uh, is calling coming back or calling it back to the main code so what is going to happen call, call delay function will jump to this part right and then Uh, this return statement will be coming back to this address, and now we will come back to this branch ABC instruction, in which will be forcing our code to jumping to uh, ABC label, which is defined here ABC, and we, we will complement it again. Uh, port B, right? So port B's content will be complemented. Then we will call again delay. So we will jump to this subroutine. This subroutine will run. uh this these these nested loop this na these nested uh, nested loops will make sure that this nop instructions run about 1 million time so what will happen that one second will produce uh close to one second uh, will be produced and we will will come out of the loop and then with this return statement will force again to go back to this loop so this is how this program will work so i hope you can simply anal analyze it using uh, calling it as a user defined function or simple subroutine which is called using the call instruction and at the end of subroutine you will have return statement the one thing which is noticeable in this uh, at this point that uh, code is started from here where we define uh, assembler directive then org start in it uh, org assembler directive was defined and then we uh, defined our main piece of code so this is our main piece of code and in that main piece there is a subroutine which is used called delay so after this code you will be writing this code which is delay so this is the, this is basically two column code so after this we are starting from here and once we finish it we return we you we use return statement as well and we have nothing to write anything in this code then we can use this assembler directive which is and assembler directive so as i told you uh, everything is written between originate to a and and so you can see this is our main code and this is our subroutine and both are written uh, in the in between these two assembler directive originate and and so there is nothing written after this and assembler directive so this part will also be compiled but if we put this assembler directive from 
uh, at this point, what is going to happen? We will have only this code and write, and this will be considered as what comments. So it will never call, right? Rather, we will have an error because we are defining in the main code call delay, and there will be no label in the code uh, which will be recognized by the compiler because this this function will be written after the and assembly directive. I hope this point is clear in your minds. Okay, that's it from this lecture. If you have any confusion, please post in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.